Hello guys, today I'm going to share my thoughts on the ASICS Gel Nimbus 25. I am fully aware that these shoes have been released quite a few months ago, they're not hot news, but I thought I could still share my review. So they have been gifted to me a few weeks ago as part of an ASICS event that I attended in London. At the time of recording this video, I've done a little over 150 kilometers in these shoes, so I've got a good idea of how they feel and what I like to use them for. So yes, I'm going to review them today. So first of all, we're gonna go over some facts and figures, then move on to the main characteristics of these shoes, what has changed compared to the Nimbus 24, and then I'll give you my honest personal thoughts about the Nimbus 25, what I like the most, and I'll compare them to some other pairs of easy road running shoes. Right. Let's get into it. The Gel Nimbus 25 is a max cushioned running shoe. It is for your easy runs on the road. It is designed for neutral pronators. It's got an 8mm heel to toe drop, so anything over 7mm is considered to be better suited for heel strikers. In terms of weight, it is not the lightest out there. We're talking about 260 grams for the average women's size and 290 grams for the average men's size. In my small UK 4.5 shoe size, these shoes weigh 236 grams. Talking about sizing for A6, I'd recommend going at least half a size up. Um, so I'm usually a UK 4 in Nike, Adidas, on any brands, but in A6, I go UK 4.5. These shoes come in 16 different colorways for men, 14 for women in the normal width and there is also one extra ride version that is available in just one colorway, I'm pretty sure it's black. Price rise, we are looking at a £175 shoe, more expensive than the previous version, the Nimbus 24, and it's also about £5 more expensive than the uh, Nike equivalent, the Invincible 3, which is also a max cushioned road running shoe that was released at around the same time. Moving on to the main characteristics of the Nimbus 25. So first of all, it features A6 new Pure Gel technology. It's a technology that is integrated in the midsole to help with shock absorption and it's meant to allow for a smoother, softer landing than what you had with the previous Gen Nimbus version. Next up, the cushioning. So the Nimbus 25 has a six new lightweight FF Blast plus Eco foam. I read that there is 20% more foam in this shoe compared to the previous version. So this makes the Nimbus 25 the most cushioned uh, Gen Nimbus shoe to date. By combining the pure gel technology and a whole lot of foam, the aim was to give a lot more underfoot comfort than with the previous version. Now looking at the upper, we've got this stretch knit fabric that is designed to be both supportive and breathable and it's also made with at least 75% recycled materials. And if we have a quick look inside the shoe, you can see a lot of padding here which makes it really really comfortable to wear. And finally, the outsole has been revisited and optimized using a rubber that is meant to be more durable. So hopefully you can clock more miles in these shoes. Now let's talk about what I like the most about these shoes. And one thing I love is how comfortable they are. I think they've been elected most comfortable running shoe by an independent lab test in South Australia. I say plush really is the keyword um, to describe the feeling you get in these shoes. It's just so nice to run in those because it feels really soft, really smooth, really soft, gentle landing, perfect for easy runs. Uh, and obviously there's a lot of foam, so they're really, really cushy. In terms of comfort, these shoes remind me quite a lot of the Invincible 2. Obviously the foam in the Nike Invincible is a bit more springy, a bit more responsive, but in terms of comfort, I would put them side to side. I especially enjoy wearing them on my short easy runs, I'd say up to 10k. I also love to wear them on an easy peasy recovery run, for instance the day after a session. Um, I feel like they do a great job at absorbing the shock of me landing on the pavement. And also there's nothing nicer than wearing max cushion running shoes when your legs are not feeling so fresh. At first I wasn't sure whether the upper was going to be that breathable because it felt quite thick to me but after running in these shoes um, in Miami for a week they are the only pair of easy road running shoes I brought so I did six out of seven runs 
in those. Well, I can confirm that my feet didn't massively overheat, considering that I was running early in the morning, it was already 25 to 27 degrees Celsius. My feet were not too, too warm, so I think the upper is definitely breathable. You can see these little holes, probably allowing for more airflow. So yes, I would say breathability, we're all good. And finally, and this relates to the comfort I was talking about earlier, I am really happy with the amount of padding. I personally prefer when the shoe is really well padded in this area. I think it's just the best for comfort. Now, are there any downsides? Well, in my opinion, these shoes look and feel a little bulky. Obviously, there's a lot of foam, you've got to put it somewhere, but this makes for quite a bulky area here. And although these shoes are super comfy and cushy, they're just a little too heavy for long, easy runs, so that's why I wear them mostly for my runs that are up to 10k, because that's absolutely fine, but I wouldn't really wear those for a 20k long run. And for comparison, these shoes are about 30 grams heavier than my Nike Invincible 2, and I wore my Invincible 2 for quite a lot of my long, easy runs. These ones would not be the ones I'd pick for anything over 10 to 12k, I reckon. And also I've got to mention the price might be discouraging. It feels like the running shoes are just getting more and more expensive and this is not even a speed shoe. This is just a, an easy road running shoe. This is meant to be your everyday trainer and it is getting a little expensive. Although at the time of recording this video, you can already find them on sale. If you go on sportsshoes.com right now, they will be at 140 pounds, which sounds already a lot better than 175 pounds. If you've been looking to buy a new pair of Max Cushion road running shoes, you might have considered both the ASICS Gel Nimbus 25 and the Nike Invincible 3. They are both Max Cushion road running shoes. They were released at around the same time. They've been compared quite a lot. Um, so the Invincible is visibly less bulky than the Gel Nimbus. It is lighter, it is also slightly cheaper. Having run in both, I would say that the Invincible 3 is less comfortable and less enjoyable to wear, in my opinion, than the Gel Nimbus 25. Um, although I absolutely love the Zoomex foam, I love how springy it is, I was a little disappointed with some of the features of the Invincible 3 compared to the Invincible 2, which I absolutely love. And I never really managed to get really used to this shoe. Um, I had the heel slippage issue that was quite a common issue with these shoes. And uh, yeah, although it is lighter, less bulky, a little cheaper, if you are on the fence between the two, I'd recommend going for the Gen Nimbus 25. They're much more comfortable, in my opinion. But now, if we bring the Invincible 2 into the mix. Uh, obviously they're getting hard to find because they're not making them anymore, but you can still find them. If we compare the two of them, well, the Invincible 2, it's a little bit more springy with the foam. It is lighter, it is as comfortable, and it is less bulky. But say that if you can still find the Invincible 2 in your size, most likely they will be discounted, just go for it. Just don't think, just order them, you will not be disappointed. These shoes are incredible. But if the Invincible 2 are no longer an option, then you can really fall back on the Gel Nimbus 25. I've been wearing them a lot lately. I love how comfy they are. They've proven in Miami that they are really breathable. I absolutely recommend them. I think I've told you everything. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful if you are considering maybe buying these shoes. And if you have them already, I'd love to hear your thoughts. What do you think? What do you use them for? Or even if you have the Invincible, how do they compare? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!